so much, uh, Jane, for having us. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Uh, so yes, so I'm Carla Rothlin and I'm the Doris McConnell Duber Professor of Immunobiology and Pharmacology at Yale University. And I co-direct a research laboratory with Dr. Sorab Ghosh. Now our lab is a multidisciplinary lab, uh, but one of the main interests of our lab is trying to understand the respond to cell death. So as you probably know, cell death is very prevalent in life. Obviously, it's very prevalent in diseases or if we injured ourselves, um, but it's also very important every day of our lives and also very important in development. So over the last decades, the field has learned a lot on how cells die. We are very interested in trying to understand how you respond to that cell death. And so how do you heal or how tissues don't heal? And we are particularly interested in more recent times in how you respond to cell death in the nervous system. Now, apart from being a professor uh, in the Department of Immunobiology and in Pharmacology, I've also been very interested in education for a long, long time. And I'm currently the Director of Graduate Studies in Immunobiology at our School of Medicine. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Carla. Elina, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about you, your lab? What do you do? Yes, uh, I want to first echo Carla. Thank you so much, Jane. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I am a professor at the uh, section of uh, molecular biology at the Division of Biological Sciences at the University of California, San Diego. And I run a laboratory uh, that is lucky to have uh, several uh, students and uh, postdocs who are amazing. And we are interested in studying uh, several aspects of immune responses uh, in the context of viral infections. And we take a holistic approach. Uh, we look at elements of the innate immune system, particularly we are interested in type one interferons and also elements of the adaptive immune system, uh, particularly T cells. And we wanna know how these elements of the immune system adapt in the context of an acute versus a chronic and more persistent or sustained viral infection and how these adaptations may influence the outcome of the infection and also the disease of the host. And uh, more recently, our approach has become even more holistic because we have started to look at uh, the crosstalk between immune cells, particularly T cells, with non-immune systems in the context of uh, these uh, viral infections and um, we are interested on how T cells impact uh, a non-immune system such as the adipose tissues or the epi a, a gut epithelial membrane or host behavior and how these uh, non-immune systems may impact back uh, the T cells. And so we have uh, started new projects on those directions as well. So um, this is probably one of the uh, few good things that we got uh, from the pandemic, Jane, because uh, it was when after the lockdown, we uh, all the seminars in our institutions has, have stopped and also the conferences and uh, we were all uh, locked at home. Um, but one of the good things about that is that we were suddenly in this virtual world, right, where we were uh, as close to a neighbor uh, uh, as we were to uh, Carla or somebody else uh, across the ocean, right? So um, we decided then that it would be very important to use these virtual platforms to uh, connect uh, uh, with the community of immunologists. And, and now that everything was virtual, why not doing globally? Um, and so that's how we started and especially inspired by an, uh, a seminar uh, symposium that uh, were at that point initiated on metabolic physiology. And um, so, I called Carla and mentioned that that could be an interesting idea to pursue and Carla was immediately super excited and we started an exchange of thoughts that enhanced the idea uh, significantly and resulted in what is uh, now the format of Global Immunotalks, the goals of the Global Immunotalks 
and we, we became more and more excited as we realized uh, how this could be really impactful, um, you know, not only to connect everyone, but to do it in a very accessible and egalitarian, egalitarian manner, and also with a very uh, low carbon footprint. So I actually remember vividly when Elena called me uh, with this brilliant idea. Uh, so I I really got very excited about it. Uh, and I thought, wow, this is fantastic, great idea. And what better to do this with somebody that has been a dear friend for almost two decades. So very excited to get this started together with Elena. I have to say that we were happily surprised. Uh, of course, we did not expect such a success. Uh, it's a very humbling experience to see how many colleagues listen to the talks live every week. Uh, just so you know, we have 10,000 colleagues registered in the webinar. And many of our colleagues watch the talks later on in the YouTube channel or in the Bibli channel. Uh, so yes, it has been uh, very successful. Now, we also like to remind ourselves and we also like to stress that we are deeply aware that we can always improve, right? So we're always thinking how to make a global immunotox better. And for this, there are some objectives that we have set. Actually, from quite early on, uh, we realized that such a global initiative uh, needs to be really inclusive. And, you know, we realized that the knowledge that Elena and I have, of course, it's limited. So immediately we realized that we needed to diversify the organizers so that we would have organizers from different regions of the world, uh, different expertise on different uh, immune topics that would also, you know, invite a broad range of speakers. And of course, as you probably can imagine, we would love to reach even more colleagues around the world. And we are uh, therefore very grateful to be having this conversation and hopefully some new people will listen about this initiative through this interview. Well, perhaps we can add uh, that uh, we are extremely thankful uh, to the organizers and uh, the speakers for making this possible. Um, you know, as soon as we reached to the organizers, uh, they were uh, thrilled to accept, and I think this is because the goals of the Global Immuno Talks really align with their values, right, that trying to uh, democratizing immunology and access to knowledge. So uh, we're, we're deeply thankful to, to all the organizers and also to all the speakers that, that generously share their research with the audience of Global Immuno Talks. Well, we all are marked by our personal experiences. And so uh, Carla and myself, we did our doctoral training in Argentina. And while it's, it is a fabulous country, um, the access that we had during our training to uh, a talks by a renowned a scientist was much limited than what uh, students are having, uh, for example, in the institutions where we currently work, right? And so uh, I think that uh, this uh, really would have made a difference for us, and I think it is making a difference for students in developing countries, and also from a small institutions in developed world that may not have access to uh, talks by, uh, again, uh, renowned immunologists. Uh, and, it's, and it is very important to uh, hear the perspective of the people that made the discoveries, not just um, you know, reading, of course, uh, but also hearing from them on how they presented their research program and their discoveries. And so I think that that's the most important impact. 
And also uh, in an anecdotal manner, we have heard from many colleagues around the world that because of financial dif difficulties, they would not have been able to access the uh, talks that are presented in the Global Immuno Talks. And also, sometimes it's not just financial, it has to do with uh, conflicts with uh, family obligations, for example. And uh, so the fact that the talks are recorded and then can be watched at any time is very convenient for many people that have conflicts because of uh, family obligations or work obligations. And so uh, I think that this has also made a positive impact. And again, that's anecdotal, but uh, I, I, I was very happy to read yesterday an article that was uh, talking about uh, data coming up from analysis of virtual conferences in science and engineering, in which it has been uh, shown that there is uh, a great increase in the participation of female scientists in virtual conferences and, and also has made a very um, quantitative comparisons on the relative uh, financial effort for a scientist in different countries in Africa versus a scientist in US to attend a, an in-person uh, conferences. And so that's, uh, that's uh, now supported by data, I think the impact of having these virtual seminars in immunology. And finally, uh, also this article mentioned uh, how uh, the footprints, the carbon footprints uh, for uh, 7,000 attendees to a virtual conference is equal to uh, one uh, person attending to an in-person conference, uh, you know, an approximation. But um, again, I think the, the other impact is, uh, you know, the access to excellence in immunology without traveling um, from the comfort of your home. So, um, I, I th we're very happy with, with what already has happened with Global Immunotox. And I don't know, maybe Carla, you can comment about the, the future, which are our goals uh, for the future. Absolutely, yes. As Selena said, we're very happy you know, with the impact that Global Immunotox have had, but we think that hopefully it can continue to have more impact in, in the future. And an area that, that we think would be maybe ideal is to team up with graduate programs around the world that might find this seminar series as an ideal complement to their graduate program. So we are starting to work towards that and we would love to see if we can team up uh, with people around the world that might benefit from having the Global Immunotalks in their program. We would love to have ideas uh, from the audience and the community of immunologists on how to build upon that, right? We have been doing it via Twitter, in part because, uh, so it is asynchronous and so people from a different time zone can also have um, egalitarian access to ask questions to the speaker and discuss with the speaker. Uh, but there may be other opportunities to increase uh, the, the interactions uh, among members of the community um, that attend Global Immunotalks. So we would be super happy to hear more about uh, potential ideas for that. I think that, um, you know, I will start with a confession. <laughs> so when I uh, moved to my postdoctoral training at the Scripps Research Institute, I felt really intimidated. It was, uh, it was hard, you know, it was a new environment, new language, new culture. Um, and uh, I think that uh, what I would advise any immigrant uh, that comes to a laboratory is such a beautiful environment, the laboratory, because there are often people from different parts of the world, right? And so I think it's important to make an extra effort to overcome the differences in the geographical origin and the culture. And once you overcome that and, and connect with the person that is there, regardless where they are coming from, I think that you can make uh, beautiful friendships and, and, and colleagues. And I think that that's, that's very important, but maybe it takes a little bit of extra effort to do it. And um, 
Uh, so I, I advise that. And, and in general, for scientists, I think that, uh, you know, many global you know, speakers have said this, and I echo that, is that, you know, it's very important to follow the passion and do something that you are truly passionate about, uh, because, you know, science can be difficult uh, many times and the experiments don't work sometimes or many times uh, but you know it's important that you tap into what is your true driver right true passion um, and so for that you know you should be interested in what you are working with thanks for listening to this uh, we look forward to your feedback and we would really, really appreciate if you like the Global Immunotalks, if you can help us spread the word so more people can benefit from this. Thank you so much.